Peter. All right, everybody. Welcome to Academy for Program Coordinators for the month of March, 2023. We have our QR codes and I'm posting the links to the attendance and the evaluation form in the chat. I will be doing that constantly. Next session, next month, is gonna be our needs assessment and lessons learned. So we're, what we're gonna do is run the needs assessment live. We're gonna see the results live and we're gonna share what lessons we learned during um, this past academic year. So bring your thoughts, bring your ideas. And if you're interested in presenting in one of our sessions, feel free to reach out. We have our official GME um, Academy for Coordinators Gmail account. So it's ACAD for PCs at gmail.com. I'm going to post it in the chat in a bit. Uh, I'm still working on getting those invites in a way that's better for everybody. So apologies for the onslaught of emails and invites that I've been sending. I'm trying to get it where we have it under one place that works perfectly for everybody. And I know that different systems, unfortunately, work differently. So I am so excited for today's topic because one, one thing we learned uh, for those who were able to attend ACGME this past month was having allies and how to involve yourself more. And I didn't think of that, um, of it that way, that they were going to mention it that way. During the conference, when I started um, uh, working on the schedule and having this topic already set up. So I am so, so excited to have Tina Bernard. Tina is one of our education managers at the Faculty Development Center here at the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. She is the author of a great book, which I started reading, Tina, by the way, called Because Yes. And if you see it right behind her, the yes, really big on her um, wall. And she is a great example of how to brand ourselves. So I'm going to stop my screen share. And Tina, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you so much, Aria. Thank you for all of you for shouting out where you're from. And thank you for the opportunity to join you guys. This is such a, a neat place. I've been in this space for about seven months now, and I come from an education background. So my doctorate's in education, and really I say I started learning when I had children. So I have three children, all have had significantly chronic medical issues, and so I term myself as a medical mom. My research career began years ago when I had a son born with spina bifida and uh, all sorts of things, but Anyway, that's what the book is sort of about, but I'm really not here to talk about the book at all. I'm here to talk about you because you guys are essentially the backbone of all that we do and you make it possible uh, to change lives and to inspire and equip all of our educators and our future doctors. In my, life, in my opinion, you guys are, are just you are the gatekeepers for all that is good. And so thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the work that you have done. Thank you for the work that you will do in the future. And so I just want to set that up with letting you know just how much I appreciate each and every one of you and the contributions you make to the medical community. Aria, thank you for inviting me to this session. And, uh, if you have any questions, I'll give you my contact information and I can share that with you. I'll be happy to talk to any of you at any time. Aria is monitoring the chat. I do have two screens going, but I like to look at you straight in the face. And so if there's something that needs to be said, just pop in, not a big deal. I'd love to talk to you. So, all right, without further ado, we're gonna talk today about presenting yourself and branding to some degree, but we're gonna talk about your role as a medical program coordinator, and what does that look like and feel like, and what are the tools that are necessary for you to be as successful as possible? So if you guys are ready to have some fun, can you use your emojis and give me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs up on your camera? 
I feed off of the energy from you guys. And so I can look over and see. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Great. Thank you so much. As good practice, we always want to disclose that there are no competing uh, values of any sort. We're not promoting anything. We're just simply going to have some fun. No um, conflict of interest whatsoever. And so for today, our objectives are that you um, take away from it what you put into it. And so this is a very personalized session, and we're going to discuss medical program coordinators in general and specifically what you contribute to the field of medicine as a program coordinator. Your distinctly important role is ready to be unleashed. It's time for you to invest in yourself and understand just how vital you are to your organization's potential. I would like to see you surpass all of your personal goals and fulfill your wildest dreams. But first, as a good friend of mine likes to say, the only way for you to um, achieve your wildest dreams is for you to dream wildly. So today we're going to embrace the idea of dreaming wildly as a medical program coordinator and what that might look like. We're going to begin with defining, defining ourselves, talk about branding essentials, and then I'm going to leave you with a call to action. So here we go. If you guys are familiar with Jen Sincero, um, Jen Sincero is a leading number one New York bestselling author, one of my favorites. Um, her The title of her book tends to have a little bit of a, a catchy title. You can Google that if you'd like. But um, if you will please grab a sheet of paper while I'm talking, you need a, a blank sheet of paper. Doesn't care how big or how small. You can even use a post-it note, whatever you have around you. Fumble through and get something to write on and something to write with, please. All right. The fundamental question for today is, who am I? So we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about who you are as an individual and as a professional. Um, so it, if you have your paper, if you will please do me a favor, you're going to fold it in half. On one half of the paper, you're going to write who am I as a person? Who are you as a person? And on the other half, I would like you to spend just a few seconds thinking about how you are, who you are as a professional. Just jot down some ideas and we'll share out. I'm going to set the timer for, oops, let's go back, two minutes. So if you will please um, look for you for about two minutes. Just spend a few seconds thinking about who are you as a person? And who are you as a program coordinator? We have about another minute. And about 20 seconds. All right. So that concludes our two minutes uh, to be thinking, man, two minutes seems like a lot when you're staring at a Zoom camera, but nonetheless, I'm going to stop sharing. 
because now is when I would like to ask you if you are able to turn on your camera. I'd like to see your face and I would like a few of us to share out what are some of the things that you thought about when you thought about who you are as either a professional or a person, your choice, just shout out a little bit about yourself and who you are. Um, I'm a program administrator from um, the University of Michigan. And for a program administrator, I put competent, strong, capable, superwoman. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Personally, I put chaos coordinator. That's one of my favorite roles as a program coordinator. But I also put educator and advocate because I do develop curriculum and I do fight for others. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I put counselor, nagger, collaborator, and an event planner. And personally, okay. I'm a dog mom. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Backbone and leader, organized, efficient, go getter. And then who I am as a person, I put I'm a wife first, I'm a daughter. I'm outgoing, I'm fun, and I'm caring. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. I went in a different direction. I said person, mom, wife, caretaker, multitasker. And then I transferred all of those but wife over to the program coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very... If you guys are familiar with any kind of laughing yoga, you know the very good, very good. <laughs> Yay! Yes, that's it's exactly right. Good. You guys are hitting the nail on the head. So anything else that you guys are thinking about? Who are you as a person and who are you as a professional? We have Rhonda with a raise hand. Go ahead, Rhonda. <laughs> You're muted. I'm sorry. As a person, I put mom, wife, daughter. And for worker, I put hard worker, work mom, capable, and event planner. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. That's amazing. Patrice. Yes, for me, I have the same for as a person, wife, mom, sister, aunt. But on for professional. I put facilitator and then I was just stuck <laughs> I, because there's so many things that everything is just, we're, we're just one, I, I think coordinators, we're, we're a country within a country. So we're, I just, I was just stuck and staring at my paper on that, on the professional, just stuck after facilitator. You know, I think that's so important that you acknowledge that. And I appreciate you bringing that up because there is just so much. Uh, I, I'm not a program coordinator, but I'm an educational program manager, I'm kind of in a little bit different department. But I do understand there's many hats that we wear, and it's important to recognize that. And so to, to distinctly write each individual one down, it somewhat can feel overwhelming. And so I, I very much appreciate you saying that. So it's it's good to recognize those things. I see one more hand and then um, Carolyn, would you like to share, please? So the only thing that I transferred over to both was mom. But the funny thing is everything else that was on person and professional was the opposite. So <laughs> personally, I'm very introverted. But at work, I have to be very personable and a little bit extroverted. Um, and then like at home, I'm very disorganized. But I think it's because I'm allowed to be because at work, I have to be very organized. Um, so a lot of my stuff was the opposite. Isn't that interesting? I'm sorry, Isn't Carolyn, but I'm, I, 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 I'm a kindred spirit with you. I'm the same way. <laughs> I love actually it. just got a thing for my office because I switched office. It says I'm not messy. I'm creatively organized. Because I like that creatively that organized. I, think I know I'm where everything is. You just may not see the, the logic behind it. 
I, I like to share, I would like to share one of the chat comments that I really loved before um, you continue, Tina. And somebody yeah. said, and oh, let me let me be honest, this is true. Babysitter for eighty toddlers. <laughs> How about an underpaid babysitter? Right, the one that <laughs> I only have thirty, but I I can go along with that. Yeah. <laughs> I only have 12, but that's still accurate. The only thing that's missing is them saying, mom, 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 mom. I feel like it's the deli counter. I want to put the strip of numbers outside the door. And when they line up, just take a number and I will get to you. But on the other hand, I wouldn't have it any other way because when it comes to graduation, I'm everybody's mother and I'm sobbing all over the place. I love that. And that passion is what carries us through, right? So people always say, um, <clears throat> I, I find pa passion and discipline are where motivation lacks. So when you get up in the morning, you're like, oh my God, it's Thursday. Here we go. Let's go to work. Uh, that's when the discipline kicks in and you're, that's when your discipline tells you, okay, it's time to get up and go to work. And then you come into work and, and you see those people and they're, you're, you were reminded that they are people and they're humans and they want to make a difference in the world and you get to be a part of that journey. And so it's so exciting. Um, for me, it's very exciting to be able to talk with you guys and really um, offer some encouragement because you are super important, which is exactly where we're headed with this presentation. So thank you all for your contributions. So Aria said, I would like um, somebody to talk about branding. And I, and I said, well, I mean, I know a little bit, just enough to get me into trouble, right? Uh, but the truth is, is that branding is all about you becoming fiercely aware of your infinite possibilities. It's so exciting to me because you you look in the mirror and you say, me, I get, I get to change the world. And the truth is, absolutely. You may not be selling anything. So branding may be kind of a weird word, but this presentation is absolutely for you because branding is everything within your personal self and your relationship with others and your ability to represent yourself and your organization and the ability to think beyond today in this moment is what will help you become the very best medical program um, coordinator that you possibly can. And if you do a good job, then the future physicians of tomorrow do a good job and that affects my family. And so I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, thank you for the positive impact you were having on not just my family, but families across the world. Your work is important and thank you. All right. So this is a, I stole this off of Aria's Facebook page. This is from a recent conference just last week, I believe. And the first thing I want to talk about before we get into the nuts and bolts of branding, I want you to think about just a few things. And this is something I, I, I have written down. I say it. This is my mantra every morning, always up, not just awake, but up. So when people see you, they need to see you up. And guess when that starts? That starts when you start your car in the morning and you leave your driveway. Because I, I think about this when we go, when I go to my campus, I have to exit a major highway and then there's about four or five red lights and then I pull into my medical school. And when I pull into my medical school, somebody's watching you know, at all times and it's it's just inevitable. And so always up, you're smiling, you're pleasant. When you're riding the elevator, even when you've had a hard day, it's important to, that your attitude reflects a vision of up, even if you're faking it, right? <laughs> That's what your students expect. That's what your dean expects and whatnot. And so it's very important that we uh, really address our attitudes. So thinking about who we are as people and who we are as professionals, it's important that we, um, we, we present ourselves with us always up. And so doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad day. It doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad minute. doesn't mean that you always have to be happy. It means that people are watching, especially students. And so it's important that we address that always up type of attitude. And we're going to get into those um, nuts and bolts, but I just wanted to say that um, being up is super important. If you don't know anybody more positive than Aria, I, I mean, I really don't know that I know anybody more positive than her. And she's such a joy to be around. 
So think about that as a program coordinator. Are you a joy to be around? Are people happy to see you? Are you happy to see yourself? If not, maybe we need to stop the presentation and reflect a little bit there. Um, but nonetheless, um, that's, a, that's a different presentation. But just smile. And I love those of you who have the camera on because every once in a while I can see you flip through. So thank you so much for showing me your, your smiles. Uh, and relationships. So let's talk about relationships kind of along this same thing. Networking is not just about meeting people. In fact, if you're only trying to meet people, that's called mingling, right? Or dating or something of the nature. But anyway, um, true, honest networking by definition is the ability to interact with others, to exchange information and develop professional and social contact, contacts. Networking is all about the professional context. And it makes sense that the first thing we do when we talk about branding ourselves is to begin with the relationship factor. And it's not just about building a relationship of what can you do for me, but I want you to ask yourself, what do I have to offer? So if you're networking for selfish reasons, you're doing it all wrong, right? Instead, let's face it, these connections um, they're not what's going to pay the dividends in the long run. What's going to pay the dividends in the long run is when you think, how can I best serve you? How can I form a symbiotic relationship where you and I have a shared goal? And our shared goal is to make sure that the future physicians of the world are equipped and able to and empowered and empowered embracing what is next for them. And so our relationships are mutually beneficial. So you have this positive attitude and you want to connect with others. And it's and, and there are people who can help you do what you want to do and get to where you want to be. But the truth of the matter is, is that you inside yourself have a lot to offer one another. And so really beginning with who am I as a person? Who am I as a professional? I want to protrude an image that is positive and then ask yourself, who can I network with who will help me become a better version of myself? And then make it a point to be authentic and intentional about forming a relationship with that person. And how do you do that? Sounds great, Tina, but I'm kind of shy. I'm kind of, um, I'm out of my league. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I, all these things are valid points. So let's talk about being prepared. First of all is recognizing that you will meet people. Okay. We've talked about this. And the truth is, is that you're going to meet students. You're going to meet professionals, you're going to meet doctors, you're going to meet um, people that you think are so important, and we're all important. But I, when I first entered into this space, I thought, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can talk to Dr. So-and-so because my experience as a medical mom has always been like, I put them on this um, this pedestal, and I think, I, I, I'm not worthy of talking to you. And the truth is, is that Absolutely you are, 100% you are. And so I want to encourage you with that fact that you are indeed um, capable of, of doing great things. So let's talk about how to be the best prepared that you can. The elevator pitch is something I like um, to, to bring up. And some of you may have heard this if you've taken a speech course or if you have... Um, uh, done any kind of marketing or whatnot, the elevator pitch is like legit. If you were in an elevator, you'd have 30 seconds to 60 seconds to ride up and down, right? And so the idea is that you do three things. You introduce yourself and then you find out more about them. And then you look for a way that you can connect and support one another. And so do not take this little piece of time, this little 60 to uh, 30 to 60 seconds and practice and know exactly what you're going to say to someone. So when somebody says, so when you get on the elevator and you're all just sitting there, do, 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 what are you going to say? Are you going to say nothing? That's a choice, right? Saying nothing is also a choice, but can you, can you use those 30 seconds to make connections and, and, and form relationships? I fully believe that most people don't get what they want for two distinct reasons. One, you might not know what you want, and two, you don't ask for it. And so for me, that elevator pitch is the time when I can introduce myself, 
tell somebody a little bit about what I do, find out what they do and see if we can make that connection so that we can work together for the things that we want. And what we want is for our students to be successful. We want them to be the best versions of themselves uh, that they can possibly be. And so it is our job and our role to support them by finding others and making those connections, not just here, but beyond. And so we're going to practice this. I am going to put in the chat, I'm going to um, stop sharing this for just a second. And in the chat, I'm going to put a resource that I think you might find interesting. And let's see, pull up this chat and everyone. And I'm going to put in a file from my computer. And what this is, is it will give you a... Um, this particular document will give you an outline for what does an actual elevator pitch look like and sound like. Some of you might have done this before, and that's great. You can kind of lead the way. Um, but here are here is a elevator pitch for the medical educator. Okay, education person. So I put that PDF in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break you into breakout rooms. And I want you to practice talking to one another. And, and maybe everybody will have a chance to go, but there are 215 people here. So this will be exciting to see how you break out. And let's see if we can put you in. All right, let's see if this will work. I'm going to put you into a breakout room and I'm going to give us about uh, four three or four minutes, and then we'll come back and talk about our uh, elevator pitches. So, all right, I'm going to try this. Here we go. Ready? I'll see you back in about three or four minutes. He just did. It was great. Ah, uh, how's everyone doing? Good. Great. Um, you know, I I'm sitting here in an empty office. My two uh, office mates are elsewhere, <laughs> but um, you know, I'm I'm doing my thing here with you guys, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know you guys better. I love awesome. your t-shirt. Thank you. My daughter just bought me the perfume. Oh, it's outstanding fragrance. <laughs> yeah. I, I am a fragrance uh, fiend. <laughs> I have about 30. <laughs> I'm so silly. I leaned forward to the computer as though I was going to be able to smell you. That's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you would like it. <laughs> my kids would be like mom you're such a dork okay so <laughs> how did your elevator pitch sound anybody have a an experience they would like to share maybe this is the first time you've heard of that or maybe it's the first time you've practiced it um first so i actually thought it was funny because we um we both got in there and the first thing i said was i don't really know what my elevator pitch pitch is I don't think I have one and then we immediately just started talking about like where we're from what we do next thing I know we were getting kicked out of the break room so I was like I guess this is our elevator pitch because <laughs> we were talking about time to get up <laughs> we were talking about how long we've each been in our roles um some of the past programs that we've had so we actually covered a lot of ground <laughs> in that little bit of time yeah it doesn't take long to form those relationships and then if you find that you connect with someone man, reach out to them, send them an email. I know it's so fun to me when I'm like, hey, remember we met on the elevator? They're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you remembered me. And I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But the truth is, is that we have connections. I don't know if you guys have ever studied the six degrees of separations, but I believe that we're if we talk long enough, we're all connected and, and we have the ability to do such in such a short amount of time and to breed that positivity just by having a short little time together. Anybody um, have another experience they'd like to share with us? Nora raising her hand. Nora. Hi, I would want to say um, I just went to the ACGME conference as well, where Aura, you did an amazing job. 
loved it. You are amazing. Um, so thank you for that, for being an advocate for us. But um, there was somebody there that I had been, um, had seen present a few times and I really wanted to meet them. And so I went over and introduced myself. And I think the one thing as coordinators, um, I don't know about most of you, but I don't know any coordinators that have business cards. So in a professional setting, I find it very um, difficult that because I had somebody that I was speaking to who was a physician hand me her card and she's like, do you have a card? And it's like, um, I don't, you know? Um, so I really kind of felt, oh, look, there are people. Well, we do not have business cards here. So I, I feel like in a professional setting, um, that might be helpful. So, but my uh, elevator exactly pitch was short, sweet, and to the point. I mean, I didn't have, um, I didn't want to take up a lot of their time, but I was uh, proud of myself for going and making an introduction and just thanking them for, um, for what they do and watching them present over the years and how much I admired it, so. And my guess is it was very well received because I, about seven, I guess, mm, last June, my book came out and I'm just speaking on personal experiences um i was asked to speak in a plethora of different venues and whatnot and and i remember each time people would come up to me and they're like i'm sorry to bother you and i'm like please bother me i'm so excited to talk to you and i think that that all last summer when i was doing that i it was so um exciting for me to be able to talk to people and so it changed my view on even how i approach speakers because we're just all people we're just all trying to make the world better and so um i want to encourage you to take those risks and to and to ride the elevator with somebody even if it's a metaphoric elevator so thank you for sharing this brings me into and i saw um in the chat a little bit of the the things. And so I want to talk about these a few things. And I had a brainstorm overnight. There's a few more things I even want to talk about. So Aria, I know I'm I'm I could talk all day, but let's talk about the nuts and bolts. So we've talked about who we are as people, who we are as professionals. We've talked about the idea of having that positive image, the always up as a mantra, perhaps for you and your life, and to anticipate relationships. You know you're going to meet people in this role. And so what do you need to be successful? One is knowing who you are helps with that elevator pitch. And then you need some tools. You need some things, some tangible things to put your hands on, even if um, you have to go to your boss and say, hey, I need a small budget for these things. These are not big, major, you know, expensive things, but they will help you both promote yourself, your students, your organization. And so I encourage you to take a look at some of these things. And we're going to go through them relatively quickly, uh, not saying that one's important or important or is that a I think that's an official term. Anyway, business cards. Yes, you need to get business cards even and have them ready and know where they are. I was at a networking meeting just this week and they said, do you have a card? And I was like, uh, I think I do. That's so unprofessional. No, you need to have cards, either have them in your pocket, have them in the back pocket of your purse, have them in your wallet, wherever it is, have a business card or at least a way people can contact you. And if you don't have business cards, I encourage you to grab yourself a Canva account. It's free. Make yourself a business card, print them on cardstock and cut them yourself if that's what you have to do for now. But get a way that you can connect with people and they can connect with you and have a have your name and your phone number, your email or whatever you prefer to be addressed by and have that ready to pass out so that you can have a solid connecting piece. With that being said, I would like to encourage you to have a system for remembering people's names and for filing the business cards that you will ask for. So whenever I get a business card, I have a whole notebook and I start, and I even have a little filing system. It's very Marie Kondo-ish. I was, that's a whole nother topic uh, for another day, but you need a system for remembering people because you're going to meet somebody and you're say, who was that girl from Philadelphia that I talked to on that coordinator meeting? Um, I, I'm going to be in Philadelphia in two weeks for a conference and I'd like to have lunch with her and get to know her more. And so then you have to, what is that? And so try to try to think about a system for remembering who people are and what what connections that you have with them. 
which reminds me to always have something to write on and write with. Even if you think you're only going into a staff meeting or maybe you think that you're going in to um, just observe something. No, always, always, always have something to write on and write with. And so that uh, that's just my, you know, Einstein would say uh, that if you don't have something like an idea not written down is just a dream. And so write it down. And those ideas can strike you in the car, in the shower. Uh, I'm not well, I actually do have an expo marker in my shower because a lot of thoughts come to me while I'm washing my hair. So the truth is that we need to have something to write on and write with at all times. I want to encourage you to look at your email, at your salutation. How are you signing your emails? If you haven't set up a really nice salutation automatically, I encourage you to do so. And it probably ought to have your company logo, maybe have your title, your contact information. Please don't forget this step. It's really important uh, for your image that you look at your signature lines on your email and that's personal and professional. And you're thinking, what does my personal life have to do with it? I promise it makes a difference. It represents who you are. And I encourage you to take a, a good, strong look at that signature line. Also, your calendars, super important. Uh, make sure that your calendars are up to date and have it either on your refrigerator at home or in your car. Have a digital version, share with your family, and and try your very best to set alarms. Um, and if you're supposed to be here at 10, my dad would say you need to be here at 945. So try not to miss meetings. It's super important that you stay organized. You can um, absolutely do it all. We are all, time is that ultimate level playing field where we all can have 24 hours. That's what we get. And so your calendar is super important and needs to be up to date. And it helps you to plan. What I want to encourage each of you to do, since I have a captive audience, and I'm not just talking about program coordinating right now, I want you to all pencil yourself in some time, either for a bath or a movie with a friend. Please schedule yourself time to be to do stuff nice for yourself. Schedule yourself. It's important that you take care of you, and it's important that you put it on the calendar because you are important. And I say pencil because we all can, you know, erase and scoot it around. But the important thing is starting today, if you've not done this, make it a practice to do something nice for yourself because you are worthy. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Um, please try to make sure that you have a friend that is not work related. And I say that because you need people to laugh with. Yeah, of course you need your work besties, right? Those people who support you and you can laugh with, but try to find somebody outside of work also that you can talk to that just has nothing to do with work. They just they just love you. And that could be a family member, a friend, but find somebody to talk to that's not just a coordinator, that somebody else that has outside interests. Maybe they ride horses, maybe they do race cars, whatever they do. Maybe, you know, somebody that you um go and have tea with or whatever you do, whatever it is that you do, find, find a friend also that you also make time for. And I mean that um, with the very best of my love and suggestions is that you make time for what's important. After all, that's why we're here, right? We like life, life is worth living and it's worth living because we do things that we enjoy. And did you know that people that enjoy their life the most do things that they enjoy? I'll say that again for those of you in the back. People that have people that enjoy themselves the most, people that enjoy their lives the most, make time for the things that they enjoy. And so, what does that look like for you? Okay, if you don't have a headshot, contact your institution. Most people do it for free. I know that our supporting institution offers headshots for free. Please don't take that step for granted. Make sure your hair is combed. Take a friend with you and and get a nice professional headshot. You deserve it. And if that is not an option at your institution, grab the teenager with the nicest phone, right? And, and do some headshots on your own, but have a very professional image. It's important for your branding. The clothes for your work and play. I have uh, these black shirts. I, every time I do a Zoom or something, I want to make sure that I am wearing something professional. And I don't like to think about what I'm going to wear every day. And so, especially if I have Zoom presentations and whatnot, I just have a couple of Zoom shirts. And if you are meeting with students in person, it's the same thing. Just always have that image of that you're professional and that, and that you're happy to be there and you're put together, right? And we're going to talk about speaker sheets. But before I go into that, I want to mention three other themes. Um, a name tag. 
not just, um, and I don't have mine on right now because we're on Zoom, but when I go to conferences, I have a nice little magnetic name tag and it's not my big bulky badge. It gets me up the elevator at work. It's a professional name tag. They're legit $12, y'all, $12. We can afford that. Um, if, if you want me to pay for it, send me an email. I'll be happy to buy you a name tag because you are worthy. You are hundred percent worthy of wearing your name on your shirt because people will remember your name if they see it. Not a big clunky badge, a name tag. Have a really nice name tag that I feel very strongly about that. Also the background on Zoom. Uh, I'm going to show you something real quick. If I, well, I'll show it to you in just a second. Oh, wait, maybe I can do it here. So if you are at home and your house is a mess, Choose something else. Like, look either. I don't know if you can see my background, but I just changed it to where it represents our administration. So I look like I'm at home. I like my background. I actually painted this as a, a wall. I'm Believe it or not, I'm in an old feed barn at my house in my home office. And this one little corner of my um, life is actually very nice and neat and organized. So think about that when you are doing a presentation or meeting with students or physicians. Think about the background and what it says about you. Nice, clean, professional. And uh, one more thing is the lighting. And I know you guys know about Zooms, but, you know, play with your lighting a little bit so that you look happy, refreshed, personable. And if, if things aren't right, your makeup and all that, it's not a big deal, but you want people to see your facial expressions. That's very important, especially students. And especially in this digital age, when we have so many hybrid meetings, it's important to pay attention to the little details. Okay. I'm going to pause here. Does anybody have anything to add to this that you would like to talk about? Uh, Tina, at, people are asking where to get the name tags. So if you have a local trophy shop, I know that the name tags we get from our institution are printed by a, um, like a, if you go to a trophy shop and, or you can order them online. Um, my professional, in fact, I'm a member of this group called the Pink Flamingos. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm telling you all this, but we're just a, a, a group of honkers that like to get together and have fun. And, and my Pink Flamingo group had a maiden. They were $3 a piece, $3 online. Just order them. And they had Pink Flamingos and, and I'm honkered. I'm honker Tina. So, you know, it can be whatever it is, but just, you know, just something professional and nice and neat and tidy. Yeah. Thank you, Aria, for sharing that. Mm -hmm. It's magnetic. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So all these imaging, these branding things, your email signature line, your business card, your name tag, this is all showing you who, who, who showing others who you are as a professional. You, of course, your personality is going to come through, but as a professional, I would be remiss should I not talk about social media. When you talk about branding, I want you to think about who you are. And I'm not going to not going to lecture you. I just want to make it a point that if you haven't Googled yourself, you probably should. And we are all fooling ourselves if we think students don't Google us. The first thing I did when I entered into my doctoral program is I was headed off to residency and I went to the University of Phoenix, which is out in Phoenix, Arizona, and I Googled every single one of my professors and I knew exactly what they look like and as much information as I could find about them. And because I care about them as a person, because I want them to care about me as a person. And so we are we are fooling ourselves if we think that our colleagues and our students aren't Googling us. So what does your social media say about you? And, um, you know, just just think about that. I'm not going to lecture. That's a whole uh, social media could be a whole nother topic for us to discuss as program coordinators. But what is your image? And um, is you know, I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. And so we're going to have one quick review before I have a, a call to action. As a medical program coordinator, guys, it is imperative that we think about who we are as a person, who we are professional. You, my friends, are on the front lines of medical advances, and you play a vital role in the health and well-being out of every level of health care from here on out. Please do not underestimate your power. Be ready and prepared to make a difference. Do spend some time thinking about the things that we've discussed 
And then as a challenge, as I leave you today, I want to share with you something that I feel also equally strongly about, as well as name tags. So I'm going to use Arias here as an example, and I'm going to drop into the chat uh, some templates. So a speaker sheet is something you may or may never use. And you're going to think, well, why do I need to know that then? And the reason why is because even if you never give anybody a copy of this speaker sheet, you have defined yourself, you've taken the time and invested in yourself, and you have thought about the things present and the topics that you can talk about. We're all experts at something. Okay. Aria, did, this, did that template come up in the chat? Okay, great. So I am going to leave you with a couple of templates and I want to challenge each of you to craft a speaker sheet. Now, Aria said, I, I can, can we, can, can you help me with this? Cause I don't even know, I don't even know what to do. And I said, Aria, let, let, let me help you. And in about five minutes, I had hers made for her. And the reason why you can make it for someone else is because it's sometimes hard to brag on ourselves. Right. And so I challenge each of you to phone a friend and to have them write a little bio for you. And then to say, what do I talk about? What do I like to talk about? What does that look like for me? And having this ready will is part of being prepared. Plus it looks really great, right? You can add it to your CV or you can add it to your social media profile or whatever if you want to, but it really just defines who you are. And what does that look like? It looks like Possibly it has your company logo and profile. Be careful if you're using your company logo and profile. Some people are real particular about their branding, uh, but it really defines you. That headshot's important. And every speaker or every conference that I've ever applied to uh, for a speaking role, they've asked for your bio and they asked for a headshot for their promotional items. And so this, if you just take the time to do this right now, guess what? It'll be done when you're ready to start branching out into that next element. So a couple of more examples. Here we go. Doesn't have to be super fancy or involved, just your contact information, your signature topics, two, three, four, five, and a little bit about who you are as a professional. Of course, this is in a professional space. Here's a couple more. And of course, you don't have to use any of my templates. You can use your own. Right, so you can do whatever whatever strikes you, but I challenge you um, to work together, to work separately, individually, whatever works best for you, and to get something kicked out. Look kind of fancy, you know. Bring this back to your organization and say, "Hey, let's create some bio sheets for each other and see what that looks like." Doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a speaker, but you know, maybe just a just a quick bio about who you are and who you are as a department and an individual, and. I do believe that is all that I have for you guys. I put that in the, temp and I will put this whole presentation into the chat as well. So uh, you'll have that and you are more than welcome to contact me at any time. It's been such an honor today. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your elevator pitches to one another. And thank you for taking uh, a, a few minutes out to spend with me. I feel like such an honor. Thank you for the work that you do um, for each other, for your students, and for our world. My family thanks you very much. All right, Aria. Thank you, Tina. Thank you so much. Everybody, uh -huh. I'm getting all the chat. Um, I'm going to share the press, um, the examples of the speaker sheets and the elevator pitch. Um, elevator pitch information also via email via the Facebook group uh again everybody thank you so much if, are there any questions before we close out today's session questions comments I didn't get the the attendance link is there any way that we could put that on there again there it goes Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave the evaluation form open until next Thursday, which is March 16th. I know next week is match week. Everybody, the best of luck. We're almost there. <laughs> uh,
Any questions, anything before we close out for today? No? Yes? No? Okay, remember next month we're going to have our needs assessment. Uh, Jessica. Audio won't work. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, what's the name of Tina's book? Tina. Uh, well, I'm I'm real. I'm not promoting my book, so um, I, I'm I'm trying to be real careful not to cross any lines. There, it's not the point. Um, contact me. I, I I mean, it's it's on Amazon. You can find it. I love you guys, and I hope. I, I mean, you know, it is what I it is. But in the chat. Thank you. I'm <laughs> I, It's not about my book. It's about. I looked it up on Amazon. It's easy to find. Just look her name up. Thank you. All right, everybody, next month we'll have our needs assessment and lessons learned. Again, if you have a special topic you want to present, send an email. I will share everything um, via the Facebook group, via the email. Again, we have our Gmail account. I am working on getting a Google group set up for the Academy. My apologies for the onslaught of emails, but it's me testing everything to make sure everything works. I understand that the firewalls in our institutions are sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time peaky. Uh, <laughs> I have a quick question. Yes. I have someone in our, um, she's my coworker. She doesn't really use Facebook. Can I just send you her email on the Gmail account? Of course, okay. of course, if you have other people. I don't think she's getting all the invites. I've been forwarding them to her, but. If you have anybody who is new in your institution, please feel the forward it to um, the information to them. Again, next month means assessment, lessons learned. If you have a topic, please, and you want to present next year, please let me know. I am going to start working on that programming after the session next month, and we will start again in August. Anything else before we go? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you all next month. Have a great match week. Thank you all so much. What a wonderful morning. I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. This was an amazing.